Welcome, traveler. You have entered the realm of adventure. Prepare yourself for tales from beyond the dice. Welcome back. We play role-playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and a few others in earlier episodes, uh, like Durance and and um, what was the other one that we played? Uh, a custom one that I wrote that's kind of like powered powered by the apocalypse. Anyway, I am Luke, your dungeon master, and with me is Ben. And I play Cortain, who's looking forward to hunting some monsters with the sewers. Peter, I play Spix and Denser. Dwarf fight officer on spare time, spare time father, most of the time, cool dude. Hello, Trav here. I play Little Moss and I'm looking forward to going up the sewers canal. <laughs> and I'm Levi and I play Locake and I'm looking forward to finding some Ninja Turtles and some meat. Cowabunga. Uh, <laughs> you're, not gonna get, you're not gonna get stuck Trav in the sewers canal? Let's wait and see what happens. All right. Now, each of you must roll a d20. The lowest result will uh, recount what happened last time or previously on Beyond the Dice. If uh, somebody rolls a 20, they get to choose the narrator. Moss, 9. Cortain, 18. Lokag, 18. I slash speaks to Nensa, rolled a one, <laughs> followed straight away next to another one. I think it makes 11. 11. One plus one, definitely 11. Peter, what happened previously on Beyond the Dice? What happened since the beginning of time? <laughs> what do I pick? What, wasn't Trap lower than 11? Was that um, your smart ass way of saying 11? Or I think he deserves to do it just for being a smart ass. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm quite unsure if he rolled a one or an eleven. <laughs> I rolled an eleven. Oh, all right. Well then, Trav, you tell us what happened previously on Beyond the Dice. Um. Okay. So, in summary, um, the the boys got dressed up in some cool stealth gears, and we're riding in a stealth vehicle. Um, which for a time I thought was a truck, but turned out to be a plane. Um, but I could only see the inside, so don't... why can't it be both? Why can't it be a a, a plane truck or a truck plane? Yeah, it's a very boring truck, just plain on the outside. <laughs> yeah, very good. It's, it's beige. A, it's vanilla transport. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the dungeon master basically spent some time trying to smooth over the previous episode. Um, and he, Yoshida, and Cortain have a chat about, um, well, they, they chat about a lot of things, but basically about whether or not Visich is a, is, is a good guy or a bad guy, and they don't really come to any conclusions. But I think he, Yoshida, was trying to get Cortain to try and work with, um, with Visich. Uh, Spigs and Glist have an interesting conversation about the future of their family and taking on a job with the Forge Fathers and then the Forge Fathers call and they say, meet me in days number three and then don't miss it Mm -hmm. or we're not going to give you the job. Um, And then Visich, Lokag and Little Moss uh, basically spill the beans that Ultra I don't know anything um, about the Helm of the Undying. Uh, which is good. And then we cut back to the actual episode where we land in Sector 16D and we meet a woman at a dumpster, which I'm going to call her (laughs) Dumpster Girl. And um, she says that there's a monster that's run into a tunnel. So we grab our bio trace detector, we grab our balls and off we go down the tunnel trying to find someone that was created by Dr. Lazarus. Perfect. Thanks. And so this is where we will pick up the story. The five of you, so Lokag, Little Moss, Cortain, Spigs, and Hayashida 
traveling down the tunnels. Oh, sorry, the six of you because Wolfie is there as well. Almost forgot. Not the a six real of person. you traveling down these large tunnels. They're approximately 20 feet wide and you've been traveling for a few hours. Spigs, you're in the lead with the bio tracer slash detector and behind you, Wolfie slowly sort of, um, you know, or not slowly, but, you know, keeping keeping up with you, obviously, but he just sort of quietly, if he can move quietly, make his way through this tunnel. And then the rest of you following behind because Wolfie has sort of made um, an effort to stay behind Spig's and keep an eye in front of him at all times. Now, on your journey through the odorous winding tunnels, you have come across um, and slayed some large bat-like creatures that you haven't heard the name of before. Um, And you haven't come across any intelligent life. There have been some strange eel things that poke out from sort of the deeper parts of the water, but then attract basically, I mean, retract basically instantly, hiding beneath the surface. And suddenly, as you guys are walking through this echoey tunnel, you hear this scratching, squeaking sound. As you walk out into this small uh, sphere-like room where the uh, the tunnel sort of I mean the, the, the waterway continues through the north uh, and then there are these large looks like intake and, and um, outlet valves that are attached to these huge tubes or uh, pipes that sort of connect into the center of this room which um, is uh, sort of slowly moving with this low pressure water this scratching and squeaking noise is getting louder and I need somebody to roll a d6 for me anyone six all right so the scratching and squeaking gets louder and louder and louder until down the tunnel from in front of you the only other direction you can go besides back this huge pack of mutated rats swarm down they're charging their 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 limbs are longer than normal their tails are shorter than what you might see in the seeing the streets of dark haven um they have multiple eyes and growths and pustules all over their body and as they swarm around you they leap forward with a hunger in their eyes and as he rolled a six you got a pretty decent outcome or the best outcome I should say you all slay the beasts you fight them you blast them to pieces slash them in half and pummel them to a pulp each of you take five poison damage what as you're welcome by the way As you walk through the pile of stinking, steaming corpses of these mutated rats, you wipe this poisonous blood and venom from the fangs of these mutated rats from your armor and your clothes. You dust yourself off and continue on. The walls of this tunnel are a very thick, dark concrete that has been stained over time by water and waste that has moved through here but now it's not running as running as high pressure as it once was as you enter the tunnel you notice that it was sort of trickling and dripping out in this sort of smelly water it's not sewage or anything like that it's just some maybe some byproduct from somewhere else that's running down here but because it's so, so slow moving and the pressure is so low it's just created this this growth around the sort of bottom edges of this circular tunnel, this round tunnel, uh, and the the water itself isn't clear. It's this sort of murky, greeny, brown, olive colour. As you come out into a large eight-tunnel connection room with these sort of walkways that pass over to the other each side of the tunnel, and in the middle there is this large um, 
steel great system and all of these bridges are made of this this great sort of um steel that is covered in this mossy growth this lichen slimy bits and as you're passing over it and following the detector where on the screen it shows you this trail heading forward north you hear a rumbling and the bubbling from this water beneath the grate i need somebody else to roll a d6 for me I rolled a one. A one. Bursting out of the water, a fearsome creature, sending algae and muck flying through the air, it lurches up onto the bridge in front of you. You see a tunnel drake. This four-eyed, dangerous beast tears through your armor with its razor-sharp teeth, causing ten necrotic damage and five piercing. It swings its tail, slamming into you and pushing you back, knocking some of you off of the bridge and into the murky water. You battle the creature for quite a while, possibly almost 10 minutes. It's a fearsome foe. You take another five bludgeoning damage as this creature flails to its death, slamming you with its tail and its limbs. It falls and slops down into the water where it came from. Those of you who fell into the water climb out of the the muck using a ladder and you begin to follow the tunnel. Can I just confirm that was 20 20 HP? Uh, 20, yep. Yep. You can take time to heal, take um, a rest using your hit dice it will be it will take an hour for you to like sort of just rest and um use hit die you can take an extended rest in the tunnel if you wish at this point because you've been traveling for hours now um he's got no time for that he has to he's got to dance in three days okay do you guys want to take a short rest or just want to continue on push on push on push on uh unless i will Trying to fight when he um, speaks is pretty damaged. It's cool. Wait for some music. When you hear the music, then we'll backtrack and take a short rest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we go. There's there's some some really big hulking mess over there. Let's just hang out back a bit and just chill. With the BTD device, has that changed in frequency, or it's just been a constant pinging and direction pointing? Because you guys have been travelling at a pretty decent pace, following the trail of the creature. The, the necrotic sort of um, trace that it's got from the, you know, the because the, it's an undead creature, it's leaving, a, you know, a slight scent and the, the, the decomposing DNA as it travels. You've been um, tracking it. The trail is getting a little weaker than when you first entered, but it may be because this creature knows these tunnels better than you do and you're following along looking at a screen while traveling around um all of the like a uh, the, the torches on your armor and such have been helping you navigate through here but you are you are try, you are sort of navigating at a slower pace because of the environment you're not so used to it you're used to uh navigating an urban sprawl this is tight tight in the sense of 20 feet by in 20 feet tunnel um, but it's still sort of enclosed com- in comparison to the broad expanse of Darkhaven and New Etica uh, but that trace it's it's been getting a little weaker but not not so much so that you won't you can't see it at points or anything you can still follow it quite easily on that device let's keep going you all want to keep going okay yeah yep. you have to keep going so I'm glad Peter's on low HP. <laughs> Who's Peter? I don't know. I don't know who and, he and is. I'm on low HP. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty healthy at the moment. But Figs, on the other hand, he's like, he's, he needs bandaging up. Your friendly neighborhood Peter man. It's like you don't have any actual limbs. What's bleeding? <laughs> His main torso you area, are. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like red face. He's just nose. He's bleeding nose. from his eyeballs. 
<laughs> now, Spigs, as you're looking at this screen and you're pointing this gun-like device around in the direction, holding onto your lead belcher as you go with your other hand, you follow the bio trace of this undead creature. You exit a tunnel into a pretty huge area, around 150 feet by 150 feet or so, which looks like it was once the remnants of a small water processing station of some sort. There are these large sort of um, vats, if you would call them those, and these large machinery with pipes and stuff running into them. Um, there's some old scratched numbers and stuff saying H2O, go. All of, all this sort of branding on it that has been worn away over time. The tunnel where the water would run sort of uh, runs down into a large pool area that you can see beneath this huge, you know, well, not huge, but this, this larger water plant area. Small buildings and the water processes and stuff are covered in rust and grime. On the other side of the um, this area, there are, there are other exits and various tunnels where they, the, uh, you know, it, the, the tunnels continue down um, or continue up in different directions. Now, it seems as if this area was also a home to some people, people who were long gone. You can see old skeletons in rags that lay amongst the shanties and the hut-like houses made of scrap materials. Spigs, as you point your bio or the bio tracer or the detector, the BTD device, across this village-like area, if you can call it that, it seems the creature didn't stop and look through the buildings. It continued on a on a sort of winding path, but a direct path through this town to one of the exits leading to the north. Now. As you move through the edge of this village, you can see an area that might have been used as a town square. There's a larger concentration of skeletons in that area. Uh, I would like all of you to roll perception. Eight for Cortain. Locate got a four. 17 for Spigs. 24 Moss. Yes. So, Spigs... And little moss, as you're looking at the direct direction, you see the skeletons, you see some sort of large statue sort of thing over in that direction as well. Looks like maybe a hand pointing into the air with its index finger pointing up. But you notice that there is this old plastic white chair and something, maybe a person, it doesn't, doesn't look like a skeleton, but it looks more filled out, the figure. It's sitting sort of slumped in the chair amongst the corpses, its head sort of resting down on its chest. Now, Spigs, you look over at that and you stop. Little Moss, you've stopped. Everyone else stops. You look at the bio tracer, Spigs, and you can see that the, the signature continues past the town square but does not enter it. It sort of just continues north past it. Do you guys wish to investigate investigate the town square, or do you want to continue following the bio tracer? Is the the trail that we're following has it taken the long way round to go around this town town square? No, it is the most direct path. But this town square isn't center to the town because of all of the vats and pipes and sort of processing water processing plant machines it's sort of to the more um east of all of that uh factory all that um sort of uh machinery okay. so okay. this creature is when you've looked at the screen when spigs is pointing at you've noticed that it's taking a very direct path for, through here the, the most optimal path yeah so it hasn't ignored this this chair with this, this figure in it. No, it's just that it hasn't noticed it or it doesn't care. It's just going somewhere and it's trying to get there in the most optimal path it can. Can I go and examine the skeleton? Uh, any skeleton? There are there are a couple, like a few meters from No, nah, no, nah, the one in the chair. 
Okay. Uh, you certainly can. Sure. So, if you want to do. You sure, we have time for this little moss. There's always time for what I want to do. Oi, well, you can catch up. We'll keep moving ahead. Spigs, do you want to keep following? Why? Why are we dawdling? I want to push on uh, ahead with uh, Spigs. Let's keep going, but uh, we got we got our comms right. They're working. Check, check. Yeah. Check one, two. It's all working, and you hear Visage say, "Everything seems to be up." I'm getting some interference. Make sure that you check in every three hours. If there is an issue, let me know. I'm monitoring the calls. It seems that because you were deep under ground, it's harder for the signal to get through. Do you need yeah, anything? I'm more, I'm more, I'm more worried about uh, the rest of our party here, not uh, as much the surface. Very well. A hey, little, little, little moss. I'm walking over here. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, you guys can hear each other fine on your local, uh, sort of like your your nearby communication. It's just a little harder to get in contact with the ultra die people. All right. All good. All right. We'll we'll continue on. Lumos, if you need to scream, we need to help, you know, just let us know. Uh, we'll let you know if there's anything ahead. Speaks, you are looking pretty knocked up. You don't want to take like a a little break here while the rest of us screw around and suss this place out. Oh, look, I'm happy to, I'm happy to, yeah, just collapse right here. Hayashida leans sort of towards you, Cortain, and he said, he says, did he just say... Speaks, you're looking a little knocked up. I didn't know male dwarves can get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> well, Speaks isn't your average kind of average kind of dwarf. As you can see, he's got chicken legs. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you will lay an egg. <laughs> Maybe. I find this area to be unsettling. Yeah, we should move I... on. But little moss is gonna do what little moss does. All right, little uh, moss, catch up. You're pretty quick. Chase us after when you're done down here. Speak straight on. I'm going to continue on with little moss. I'll uh, I'll catch up with you guys. Wait, so sorry, is, uh, is Ishida going to go with little moss into the town center? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. Bye. All right. So always split the party. Speaks, <laughs> Lokag, Cortain, and Wolfie continue on north following the bio trace through the sort of this optimal path that this creature has taken passing the large pipes and tubes running into all the machinery and then you find a uh, like a steel stairway running down into this next tunnel that continues on and you all make your way start to make your way down towards that northern direction now little moss and Hayashida both make their way into the town center. Little Moss, you notice small structures that could have been market stores. They're sort of welded together. They have tarpaulin or tarp topping to them, the benches, and there are little crates and stuff around the place that look like they've been pulled apart and um, opened up, and all this junk and stuff is laying all over the place. You see this large statue in the center of this um, this town square area and it is a hand with the index pointer in index finger pointing up towards the sky if there were a sky the statues welded together from old machine parts and scrap metal and you see some hubcaps from old cars and stuff to make up this hand and as you get closer to this plastic chair with this figure sort of resting hunched in it with its head on its sort of chest area, its head bowed, facing away from this statue, seemingly looking down on all of these corpses in front of it. You see it's a droid. Hayashida says, some sort of droid. He holds his katana sort of ready. I don't think we should engage until we know what we're looking at. It could have killed all these people here, or it could itself be dismantled. Now, you notice that its torso and legs are made up of 
a sky transit cleaner robot. It's this um, this very pale sky blue color um, with the sky transit logo in this sort of old school sort of 50s Coca-Cola like print on the chest. Uh, its legs are the same, but they are have like <coughs> panels replaced on it in various in orange, rusty colors. Its head is this Horace Industries crash dummy head uh, with like a, you know, it's this orange color with a black sort of um, crosshair sort of symbol on its face. There's like a little, um, like a little opening, a square opening for where a, uh, a mouth would be. And then these two circular, completely black lens eye sockets. Its arms uh, Akio Saib, you see it written down the side of them, these big, not gorilla-like, but almost gorilla-like battle arms, these very circular shoulders with these nodules all over them, and then thin uh, upper arms, and then the forearms are larger, and there's these um, large fists at the end, and down the forearms in big red font, it says block font, it says Akio Saib. In this sort of um, this uh, on this plating that is charcoal grey, on the droid's head is an old stockman cowboy hat that looks quite worn and a little damp. This droid looks damaged. It's riddled with bullet holes, battle scars across its steel and plastic plating. And as you approach, little Moss with Hayashida behind you, sort of in a battle stance, slowly creeping up, holding his katana at his side in its sheath. The droid, who was lurched forward, shakingly sits up and powers on. I, I, I have failed my, 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 my parameters. I am, I, I am sheriff. The town town is deceased. There are zero citizens. Gregor is at town. We exchange pleasant trees. Audio, audio processing, ding, ding, ding. Processing. I cannot shut down, shut, shut down. Only sleep mode is accessible. I have taken extensive extensive damage to my, 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 my hardware, my software, 75% compromised, secondary tasks still in effect, structures are, are defended, attacks no longer. <clears throat> Attackers have been destroyed. Their central cortex scattered across the floor. Their skulls smashed to dust. Dust, 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 dust. Town. Town still stands. There are zero citizens. Have you come to be a citizen? I am Sheriff, have you come to be citizen? Have you come to be a citizen? I'm sheriff. I'm sheriff. Yes, totally Gre here to be a citizen. Want to join? Where do Gregor, I sign up? Gregor, visit. Ah, uh, who are you? Uh, it's voice. His voice Greg is constantly changing to all these different sounds, and it, it, there's some sort of problems with its. It's a um, speaker box of some sort. It finally sort of settles on a voice. I am Sheriff. Who are you? Hello. My name's Little Moss and I want to be a citizen. Welcome to the town. There are, 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 are zero current citizens. If you wish to fill out a form to become a citizen, follow me. It goes to stand and it's sort of like, falls to the ground on its hands and it's like shaking. That's okay. Just tell me where they are and I'll go and sign one. Uh, uh, I must accompany you. Oh, here, let me help. And then I try and pick him up and carry him. 
He's quite heavy. Roll a strength check for me. Hayashida says, Be careful, little Moss. We don't know if there's something wrong with this, this sheriff droid thing. 17. You help him up. Thank you for your assist- assistance. Have you come to be a citizen? I mean, I don't mean to go over old ground, but yes. Where do I sign? The, 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 this direction. He yes. points its arm out towards this um this small blue building. It's made up of all scrap and, and and stuff like that, but it's been painted blue. This very similar blue to what's on his torso. You walk over there with it and he pokes his head inside. It 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 seems somebody has a thief has 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 taken all of the equipment. I cannot process your citizenship right now, but if you wish to help me find the, 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 the thieves who have stolen the equipment, I shall make you a, a, a deputy. All right. How do I become a deputy? Do you just give me a badge or? He presses some of these panels on his arm. A little panel slides open. He pulls out a old timey sort of six shooter revolver. It's completely rusted. He puts it in your hand. He reaches into that compartment and he pulls out this uh, sort of circle pin, like a uh, little clip pin with a um, a symbol of the hand with the finger pointing up. And then in the center of the palm of the hand, there is a uh, little like a little house symbol. Sick. You, you, li- 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 little moss, are a c- 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 citizen. A temporary citizen. A a temporary. Uh, uh, uh. You are a deputy of the town. You are a deputy of the town. Have you seen Gregor? Um, no, but we're gonna go look for him. V- 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 very w- 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 very well. We shall find Gregor, and he will assist us in in. <clears throat> he sort of slumps forward a bit his hand resting on the wall and he's just making a slow like a very basic computer processing sound and his head looks up Uh, 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 I left the town once before Uh, 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 against my purpose uh, uh, against my programming Uh, uh, I will not leave the town again deputy that's okay. E- Leave e- it with e- me. F- fine, Gregor. And the the little uh, lights in his eyes go out. Sleep mode activated. Sleep mode activated. Sick. It just um, rests there with its hand on the wall. It's on its knees in front of this sheriff office. So I I presume that if I can I do a cursory search of the city for any of the corpses that might have I don't know name tags with Gregor written on them I don't know <laughs> I don't know when this town was taken over but could that be a, a thing I, I don't want to spend the, long here I want to catch up to the group but the corpse the the, the skeletons uh, have been picked clean by probably mutant rats and other sort of deniz- denizens of this um, mm. this underground tunnel system this sewer system the clothing that you've seen on them has basically been ripped to shreds uh, and almost completely rotted away and the skeletons they don't have any flesh on them any sinew and or ligaments that were once there have completely rotted away they've probably they probably died like these people probably died maybe a hundred years ago Do I need to roll a history check to try and figure out if I can place the timing? Like, based on the make and model of the droid, for example? I would say you probably wouldn't be able to do that uh, because you're not so familiar with... You can definitely try but you're not so, so familiar with the construction of robots and droids and stuff because you're you're still kind of fairly new to New Etika. Um, yeah. But you know by looking at the skeleton from your, your history that 
you know, because there are in the monastery, there were some on display of some old monks that, you know, died for the cause of the monastery. Um, and the these bones, they're not obviously not as well taken care of as the ones in the monastery, but the ones on the ground here are old. Okay. And you can kind of you can kind of piece together around a hundred, uh, between a hundred and eighty and a hundred years ago, they they died. Yep. Okay. You can just and tell that with your so sort of background. I'm going to make a logical conclusion that I'm probably not going to find Gregor just wandering around the town. Possibly, possibly not, unless um, any of those skeletons rise, but they haven't right now. So you guess not. Yep. Okay. Um, are there any prominent buildings outside of the sheriff? Um, residents that may be worth having a look at just on a cursory glance the only one is a a concrete structure that has an old sign above it that says office the windows are gone like they've been smashed the door's been kicked down it literally there has some office skeletons. It has it has office written on it, huh. like a sign. Um, there are some skeletons around that building, you know, two or three of them. Um, but that's the only one that doesn't look like just a complete shanty town structure. Yeah. Okay. Off to the office. Hayashida follows you. You look around. There are a few desks and stuff in there. They've been pushed over and tipped. Uh, anything of real value even a lot of um, things that you would normally find in the office like the drawers of some filing cabinets have been taken it seems like maybe this place was raided by somebody maybe another town that lives under here or something you're not sure but they've gone and taken taken a lot of things okay so it's been picked clean yeah basically picked clean okay um I can I do one search? Yep, roll a um, perception or an investigation. Um, it's like which one suits me better? And tell me what you want to be, what you're looking for, where you're looking. Um, I want to obviously all of the normal places where people would look for things has been done over i'm looking specifically at the floors for loose boards or anything that could be pried up anything that maybe people tried to hide uh during a raid to not be found yep that's the um, investigation uh 17 17 all right so you find one of the desks that are built into the actual structure they've been bolted into the wall and you're like looking around and you go to look at something that kind of looks like might be a trap door and you just find it's like a drain just in case maybe water flooded and then they basically um, slide open this, this little door and then there's a drain under there to, you know, just uh, evacuate the water. But while you're under there, you see that there is a what looks like a box that has been taped on the underside of this desk. You pull it free, uh, you open it up, and you find this leather glove. On the hand part, there is this, looks like an amber stone that's been held in this copper sort of um, ring. The copper then extends up the fingers... There is a cap on each finger, this just little round cap, and then across the top of the phalanges up to the knuckles where each knuckle has its own little cap. And then it runs up to the wrist area, which is then a large uh, copper bangle. And in in the bangle, there are all of these um, amber uh, and what looks like maybe emerald gems. And there is like a little toggle on the side of it. Of the side of this bangle. Cool. Can I fiddle with the? You um, click the toggle, the toggle. Yep. And the gems begin to glow, and this amber of the palm begins to glow, <clears throat> and it shines this sort of 
amber light out of it, projecting probably 15 feet. Uh, and you put your hand over it, and... You heal nine hit points. Cool. And then the lights go out, and you see the gems on the top. Um, there are... Uh, on the bangle, I should say. There are eight gems. One amber... Oh, sorry, uh, four amber and four emerald. One of the amber ones goes out. Stops cool. Glowing. Okay. So it's got charges. That's sweet. All right, I... Whack that in the bum bag. Um, take one last look around and then head out of the office back to the main square. I reckon I'm going to try and, like, maybe I can consult with Hiyashida. Yep. Um, hey, I mean, I, I don't reckon we're going to find Gregor. It seems like these guys have been hanging around for a while. But he might be somewhere further down the line. You want to just catch up to the others and see what comes up? Yeah, I've had a look around while you're in that office, and all I came across were very old, broken weapons. Very rudimentary ones like hammers, some axes. I, I found a few old rifles, bolt action, rusted out. No use to anybody. I feel like these people might have died a long time ago. We can, uh, we can continue out if you want. I don't think... There is much of a mystery to solve. Maybe we can tag this and Ultra Die can come through and maybe get that sheriff droid up and running if they wish to find out who these people were or what they're what they were doing down here. Uh, but I think you're right. We need to continue on with the mission. This has okay. no relevance to what we're doing. Yeah, that's never stopped me. But all right, let's go. All right, you continue on. Uh, both of you begin to sort of sprint to catch up to your friends. Uh, you saw them go north, so you follow in that direction. Um, you guys, um, you can sort of track them on your heads-up display in your glasses, Little Moss. So you can see where your friends are. You've got all that sort of new um, software installed on your new mask and everything like that as well when, when uh, Ultra Die gave you those. Now, the guys who were further out, um, so it travelled on, uh, you continue by the town through the tunnel, which the undead cyborg thing made its way through. Now, you're walking in a slightly larger tunnel. You notice that it's become older in its structure, in its design and, and build. It's, in the engineering of this tunnel. It was large sections of completely pre-constructed cement tunnels and sections. It's now become a very old brick style tunnel. All of these various, you know, uh, starting larger and then building up smaller to the very top of the tunnel, all these bricks that go on for ages and ages and ages. It's sort of like um, the, the, the very well sort of newer construction tunnel stops and then it's very old brick. As you're traveling and you're stepping over sort of large piles of things and scrap um, that has been sort of washed in this direction, um, that's got caught on its way down deeper underground, um, I need you to all, all three of you to roll a perception check. Loke had got a nine. Cortain got one. Uh, you stub your toe. Perceptions. Pig's got six. Six. Okay. We see nothing. We just keep going. Um. We just walk straight into no, the no, mouth no. of some right. monster. You notice that there are white painted markings all of a sudden over some of the bricks. They look like old runes. Um, 
Yeah. Look at the gold runes. Kind of dwarven. You want to check out those runes? There's white stuff on those walls. It looks like someone put it on there on purpose. Uh, I guess so. So as you shine your light on it, um, you want to roll a, a history? Sure. Also, Spigs, is there any reason why you're walking and not riding on Wolfie? Because, like, you're he damn probably, slow. You probably couldn't fit on top of him in the tunnel, maybe. Yeah, man. I'll get uh, squished up there. You should have brought wheels or something. Look, I was, I was thinking of, like, an under-slung, undercarriage chassis thing. Uh, well, that's obviously a, a job for some other cool. time. What do the runes do? <laughs> oh, I could start now. We've got no time for that now. Um, so, and then so Spigs rolled 18 plus 6. 24. History. 24. All right. So, these runes are ancient dwarven runes. Some of the older families still use similar rune spigs. They're generally modernized ones, basically in a different font sort of thing. Um, these are used for protection warding, for luck, and uh, safe journeys. People would use them on their, you know, put them on the front of their houses if they're really old sort of bloodline families. Generally, the richer people in um, New Etika, the Richard Dwarves, will still hold on to those because they've got the the money and the, to, to keep their history. They've got the old tomes, the old carvings, all that sort of stuff they still have in their possession because they were the sort of more prominent um, wealthy people of power where the, the sort of poorer dwarves, they didn't have access to that stuff in the old times, um, so they don't have access to it now. And a lot of their history has been lost. Um, but yeah, you know that it sort of means some of the wards mean protection, some of them mean luck, and some of them mean safe journey. Would Spigs have a guess that this is more like a dwarven tunnel, like protection for escaping or traveling? You know that, I mean, you think that these these tunnels could have definitely been built by dwarves. There's no doubt about that. There's no cult, and uh, there's no not cult, but there's no um, clan insignias or logos or um, signs that say that this particular clan built this tunnel. Which is usually the case if it's like a, uh, if it's like you know, if it was dwarves building this tunnel or a structure with pride. They would build this. Most likely, it was a bunch of dwarves that were hired to build this, or maybe even other races helped build this. Um, but usually, if it was only dwarves that built this, and specifically built by dwarves for dwarves or for a particular purpose, they would have stone carvings in the walls um, to show the clan insignia or to 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 show these runes in a more uh, permanent setting rather than just painted on because like water is supposed to flow through here so even stone or cement will erode over time uh, but it would take a lot longer to erode than obviously paint will looks like we've got our old cheerleader squad just uh giving us luck on our journey i don't know maybe the Pretty old though. Fair enough. Luck's never a bad thing to have. What if we touch? You know, are they are they activatable or are they just a message? We and Cortan goes and touches one of the runes. Roll an investigation for me, Cortan. That's a solid eight right there. Okay, as you touch it, um. It's painted on there pretty good. It looks fairly fresh, actually. You only notice that it's fairly fresh because there is no grime covering the wall like other places. It looks like it's been sort of swiped away and uh, the stone has been 
sort of not cleaned, but it's just been brushed so that the paint can go on there a little easier. But when you touch it, it doesn't activate, doesn't glow or anything like that. Kind of like just maybe like a good luck charm sort of rune. That's what you expect. Hmm. I relay that. To I think it's just. I think it's just a message. I relay that to the to the team. That doesn't look like it's very old. So as you're as you're looking at this and talking about it, Hayashida and Little Moss catch up. Hey, Little Moss, what did you find? We found some good luck runes. They don't really do much, but they're they're fair recent. That sucks. I found a glowing glove that makes me feel better. Oh. Yeah, right. You want a high five? Sure. Then I turn the glove on and I give him a high five. All right. Um, Lokag, how hard do you high five? Oh, like a solid, like a firm one. I'm not trying to, like, prove anything. Just like a, I want to get a nice clack. Yeah, All right. Want, well. You want crisp. I, crisp. I crisp. would like... Lokeg, I would like you to roll a strength check for me. Let's just see how. <laughs> okay, so how I've got well a... you can gauge your level of high five. I got a six for my strength check. Okay, cool. So, lo, um, little Moss, you turn, you flick the toggle, the green gem, or the emerald-looking gem, glows. The amber on the palm, which you can't like grasp anything when you're wearing this glove properly uh, because it's so large. It covers the whole sort of um, flat surface of your palm. Uh, that glows um, that ambery color with a little bit of t- a tinge of green through there. And uh, you high five Lokag when you come together. Lokag, you heal four hit points. Nice. Hey, it does make me feel good. Little Moss, high or lows? For very favorable results. Highs. Highs? 16. When you slap, you hear this like slight crunching sound of that amber, and then you quickly like the, the the high five isn't as crisp as it would be because your reflex was just so quick that you pulled it away. Um, you see a little bit of that amber sort of crystal um fall off, like a little piece cracks and falls away. But Whoa. the integrity of the crystal doesn't change it's just a tiny little piece of the edge like okay. it doesn't it doesn't uh doesn't crack all the way through or anything like that just a little chip falls off then the green crystal on the back goes dull where the others are still glowing cool boy speaks hey, uh... check this out yeah look what glove? We're giving like healing fives. I could really use some. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Can you see? This is not. This is not like war paint on my face. He holds up a bloody stump. <laughs> <laughs> I put the glove away and I I pretend like nothing's happened. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Little boss. Fix me up, mate. What are you doing? Don't you have a stim or something? No. Fine. I pull it out and I suck tap him. I with... wrestled that. I wrestled that crocodile for you, and and this is what this is what you're doing. That you never heal happened. Five help health as uh, little moss goes to sort of swing for your groin area in a joking <laughs> way, but then this light sort of like this amber light bursts out, um, <laughs> and you and you heal. You're welcome. Lucky Thanks. you don't have a real groin. <laughs> so I'll show you. But, uh, <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I have to disconnect my legs first. Hi, <laughs> Sheeta. Oh, that puts sounds, his hand. That sounds like your poor wife. <laughs> I'm coming to bed, honey. Just let me put my legs away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you like make love to her without legs on? Them? Like your stumps flailing around and oh yuck Hayashida puts his hand on your uh, arm um, Spigs and he says look I don't want anybody exposing themselves in the tunnels or anything (laughs) I think we should really continue on and uh, 
Let's just focus on the mission. Yeah, speaks, and he looks the little take moss. Take your pants off in this place. We'll get a venereal oh. disease just from the air. I thought uh, you you were healing me as well, Hiroshita. Damn. You get Sorry. a bad case of rat sack. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've got a couple stims, but I don't think we should use them until... I don't know, until we really need them. Are you that... Are you that injured? Oh, like you. As long as we don't get into a fist fight anytime soon, we have a like, little rest to be all right. All right, well, here. He pulls it out of, from his belt and he passes it to you. It's an inhaler, an inhaler stim. Use it at your discretion. If you th- think we're going to get in a fight quickly, breathe in, take a breath of the, the inhaler. It's a one-use item. Uh, let's just continue on. Thanks. So... Down the old dark tunnels you go, passing by piles of dried refuse and rubbish. There are only very small trickles and in in sections, uh, very thin snaking water running through the tunnel. Very, um, it's getting a little smellier now. It's sort of running down through this these piles of all this stuff that has built up in this tunnel on the old, on the uneven surfaces of this brick um, waterway and you come to a three way split in the tunnel you point the dire- the detector this this uh, BTD device and it shows that the bio trace continues straight ahead down the second tunnel rather than the, the, the uh, two that veer off in a sort of a, a wire shape you continue following it, and as you move through the old musty tunnel, you begin to smell something horrid. Your eyes begin to water, and the pit of your stomach lurches. You come across a very thin tunnel. A green light is leaking out of the thin tunnel and into the larger one you are travelling down. As you peek around the corner of the tunnel, you see something is spilled out of some barrels, some vats that are painted bright yellow. This glowing bubbling radiant glue like green slime it's covering the barrels and the roof and the walls and the vats and the floor in which it's been dumped I need all of you to make a tolerance saving throw or a constitution saving throw for me it would be poison and would I get advantage on it 22 for moss it's not poison 24 for locag Oof, nice, both of you, nice. 11 for Spigs. 22 for Cortain. Smells All like right. the time Spigs did number threes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why did you bother sniffing it? So, Spigs, you feel cold, and then suddenly you feel hot. And then you move your mask that you've been wearing, and you throw up onto the ground, so you feel sick to the stomach. And then you feel your skin starting to burn as you're looking around the corner. And so you turn back away from it. Um, you take five radiant damage, five necrotic damage, and one level of exhaustion as this radiation from this this slime is just pulsing out of this, um, out of this little tunnel, this thin tunnel. The rest of you guys, you push past the terrible feeling and the pain from the burning and the sickness in your stomach. You take three radiant damage and four necrotic damage. Oh, guys. Oh, that was disgusting. I don't feel so good. Yeah, well, this is the worst place to take a rest now. You guys quickly move away from this, this tunnel and you push past some a big pile of refuse and you knock over some trash that's just caught on it and you make your way through the tunnel sort of quickly to get away from this feeling and it, and it dissipates this this horrible feeling of this radiation. Can I get everyone to roll a perception check for me? Cortain, 18. Moss, 10. Okay, I've got to get a crit with 20. Nice. Nice. 15 for speeds. All right. So everybody over 15 on the perception check. You hear very light footsteps and a little sploosh sound like somebody stepping in a small puddle. Someone is coming towards you. Hayashida has his hand on his katana and he's looking around, looking forward from where the sound is coming from, holding his katana. Wolfie gets down really low and 
his eyes go from that bluey, that blue glowing light that's sort of giving you guys extra light. It glows to this red battle mode has been activated. You guys hear yes. somebody as a click sound and you hear, What are you doing down here? It's dangerous. And that fucking stuff over there is deadly. And this is my swamp. <laughs> so... You said, so it was, was it around the corner that we heard the footsteps? Straight ahead, but there's all this, like, junk and rubbish in the way, in the tunnel. You can't see this person. You just heard them coming towards you. Then you heard a click of what sounded like maybe a gun, and then you heard them shout out. So I brought my shield up. We're looking for a monster. We're monster Plenty hunters. of monsters down here, lad. Plenty of monsters down here. Like I asked you, what are you doing down here? We just... What do you want with this monster? The Slayer? What else do you do with monsters? That's true, actually. Alright, look. What? Who, who, who are you? I don't... My name's Gregor. Now... What? Stay there. I'm going to come out from behind this... This thing here. This box. I do have a gun. Are you our cheerleader? Who's been leaving those good luck charms for us? You've seen my runes? Yeah. Boy, well, Spigs can read them too. He steps out from behind this box. You see, see these it? three green lens sort of um, lights. And he walks into the light of your torch light. Your torches on your guns and your armor and such. And you see this dwarf wearing a silver hazmat suit. He's got this gas mask with these three lenses. Two over his eyes and then one on the forehead that is a little bit larger. He is holding his shotgun out and there he clicks a light and a torch shines out of the middle light on the uh, on his gas mask. He's holding a paint can with a paintbrush in it with this white paint and he puts it down. He, re- he, he holds his sawn off shotgun uh, sort of like in the air and he's like, I'm just going to grab something. It's going to help with those burns. He points towards Spigs who on your um on any of the flesh that is showing there's like sort of still burnt from that radiation he pulls free from his waist this clear uh like pump bottle with this purple gel inside look you rub that on your skin where you got burnt from that shit and it'll make you feel a little better and it makes sure that it won't spread i think all of yours who got burnt or even a little should use this so it doesn't get worse because that will keep going it, it it kills the skin, burns it away. And he puts the clear thing on the ground. Now I'm gonna back up and then we can have a little chat. He takes a few steps forward. He's holding his shotgun in the air. Um, as he takes a few steps back, he sees his paint can and he sort of leans down slowly looking at you guys and he picks up his paint can. Uh, Spigs goes before, picks up the liquid bottle and he then tests it on his one of the patches where there's like a bit of burn it's like a soothing feeling the the burning stops uh it heals you for five hit points um and then you see where it's burnt as you shine your torch down on it the sort of charred skin just like um just crisps like falls off and just shows bare skin underneath and this purple gel is like um is soothing it and healing you can I whis- can I whisper into the group comms? Yep. Um, guys, when I was back in that town, um, I went and checked out the droid, and he asked me to find Gregor. So I think That's this right. might be this might be the guy we're looking for. What what droid? There was a droid in the town, says Hayashida. It was a patchwork droid, the sheriff of that town supposedly, and he had a he mentioned this person named Gregor. I you find sheriff, did you? Oh. Not looking good, is he? That's where we'll leave it for now. No, I <laughs> want to know. I have so many questions.
Hey, everyone. Thanks for downloading. Thank you for listening. Thank you for um, downloading all of our shows to a, um, a cassette tape and then throwing it into the eyes of your uncle or someone. Uh, and then thank you for sharing the show with a friend. To help you sh- share the show with that friend, you can send them to our website, which is beyond the dice, no, www.beyondthedice.com. Links to Discord, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Spotify. That's a pretty easy way to check out all of our awesome, amazing content. What an amazing episode if you like more sewer trash and f- pictures of you should totally get on uh instagram there's actually not f- pictures of sewers and stuff but way cooler things than that so that's just at beyond the dice if you use facebook regularly and you want to keep up to date with the latest news and releases of episodes check out our facebook page beyond the dice the One of the best ways that you can help us for free would be to leave us a review. um, Five stars, if that's what you really think. Five stars. stars. Uh, And otherwise, you can support us by buying some of our merch on our store at store.beyondthedice.com. Oh, yeah. If you can't afford to buy some stuff on the store, that is fine. We absolutely understand, but it is a great way of um, supporting the show and helping us... um, you know, continue making this uh, grow. So uh, if you can't afford it, that's all good. Just um, share us on social media like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wherever, or, um, you know, record our episodes to tape or CD and throw them at somebody who might like it. Um, Or you could just tell them, hey, Beyond the Dice, it's a podcast. Everyone, Make sure that uh, if you are traversing the undersystem of the tunnels that you do not step in in any goat-shaped poops. Bye. 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 See you later. See ya.